time. All right, well, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm excited that you're here tonight. We are kicking off our first huddle up. We're gonna do two different huddle ups this particular round of our Health Games Challenge. And uh, this is the first one. We're doing it in week two because we wanted to give people plenty of time to get settled and join in before we really got into the nitty gritty of some of the game winning tips. We got plenty of time to win. If, if you've just joined the challenge, hey, just sit back and enjoy uh, this webinar because you're gonna learn a lot about how to be a winner in the challenge. We're also going to talk to you a little bit about uh, how to be a loser in the challenge. If you want to lose weight, if you want to just maintain a healthy weight, we're going to have lots of healthy eating made simple tips. And we're also going to share some additional support options. So if you feel like that you're struggling a little bit, and you haven't figured out necessarily a winning game plan to achieve the goals that you've established for yourself or that you've selected as a part of this challenge, stay tuned. This next 30 minutes will help you uh, get started and get off to a great start and have a, a great finish to this particular challenge and beyond. My name is David Bush. I'm one of the certified health coaches and one of the leaders inside the challenge. Uh, you may have been invited to this particular webinar webinar by a coach. You may be uh, invited to the webinar by the challenge and you may have just seen the link on Facebook or social media or email. It doesn't make a difference how you found it. We're just glad that you're here. Uh, we all work as certified health coaches and we work to help people to create health in their life. And Donnie and uh, Craig are here to guide this uh, panel along and to give us their feedback. As you can tell, uh, each one of us is a big loser and uh, you don't have to necessarily have the same story as we do, but we're pretty passionate about helping people to create health in their life, not just about losing weight, but it just so happens that each one of us has a weight loss story. And uh, that's our story. Your story is just maybe being written right now and it's okay if you're just making healthier choices and exercising. But if you do need to drop a few pounds, we want to let you know that we know how to do it and we've helped many other people to do it with the challenges and with our health coaching program. So Donnie and Craig, welcome to the webinar tonight. Thanks for having us, David. Excited to be here. You bet. Well, let's do a quick survey. We're going to do a survey using the chat feature. And we'd like to just have you uh, put in a simple one word answer. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to just know how are you doing with your healthy eating habits? So if you're doing excellent, write down the word excellent. If you're doing good, good. If you're doing not so good, you can just write the word poor. And if you're doing terrible, write the word terrible. It doesn't necessarily matter where you're starting at right now. If you've been unhealthy with your eating habits, go ahead and just be honest with yourself. Current reality is your current reality. That's not your future. And just being real with yourself is a great awakening. Donnie, you know from personal experience that just the idea of facing some of the hard facts of knowing that you haven't been very good with your healthy eating, um, that could be a great motivator to get started. Talk a little bit more about what you experienced when you first faced the facts of you weren't following the healthy eating pattern. Well, I, as a nurse practitioner, I ran a weight management program for kids. And so I therefore thought I knew it all. <laughs> and just as Craig was talking about earlier, it doesn't matter what you know if you're not doing what you know. And that's one of the beautiful things about this challenge is that you get to check it off every day. I did it. I did it. And a life got in the way of life for me. And I had twins and I didn't have the energy. I didn't have the motivation. I had a lot of excuses. I had really good excuses too. Um, but the reality is that I wasn't doing what I knew and therefore I didn't get the results that I wanted. But it's kind of crazy how when I started doing what I knew, I got the results that I wanted. And what bridged that gap for me was having the accountability of the health coach. You know, somebody touching base with me, somebody holding me accountable and putting the mirror up and saying, is this still where you want to be? And I would look at it and say, nope. You know, you asked everybody to, to type in where they are with their eating habits. And just putting it out there feels ooh, a little uncomfortable. But the minute we see it, we're like, wait a minute, I'm not okay with that. So taking a, a good hard look at where we are, a real look, um, just kind of motivates us to maybe make a shift. It's like looking in the mirror. You know, oh, I have, I have a hair out of the way. Let me just put it out of the way. You know, same thing. 
Yeah. And we have a bunch of people inside of this healthy community that come together for these health challenges. Um, not all of them are part of our health coaching program. Not all of them are health coaches. Um, we are just a community of people that are coming together to practice healthy habits together. But you'll soon find that there's lots of encouragement, lots of transparency. We like to call these communities or challenges a safe space, a safe place to come where you can celebrate healthy decisions. You can share some of the struggles that you're having and receive receive lots of encouragement, lots of resources, and lots of opportunities for support. Craig, talk a little bit more about why the challenges are so beneficial to people, whether they're a part of our coaching program or just doing their own thing. Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, every time I've been involved in every challenge that we've had over the last four years, and, and I find that um, I'm more attentive I can't be in a challenge all the time, but I'm more attentive when there's a challenge going on. And then each time the challenge ends, I, um, I seem to ebb and flow um, less and less. And it's like I'm building a rhythm that actually is working for me. And so I have so many of my of clients that I personally coach that love the ongoing support. Um, quite frankly, um, just about anybody can lose weight and has. Keeping it off is really the challenge. You know, saying you lost weight on a certain program or a certain, you know, thing that you did, you know, it's keeping it off. And so that's what we're really focusing on here. You know, lose weight however you want. We've got some great <laughs> programs that will lose some weight. But after that, what does your program offer after that? And so that's why I see people come back over and over and over again to um, not necessarily learn the habits but it's to practice them. And when you practice them, you get the benefit. So that's the big deal I see in that challenges. Yeah, and the reason why we titled it the Health Games Challenge is because it's more of a game than it is a challenge or a contest where only one person wins. This is an opportunity for you to play a game and to challenge yourself to practice the habits of health, which is what all of us want to do more consistently. So as you could probably tell already, we like to have fun and the Meltdown Challenge organization provides a great platform for us to have fun. They provide opportunities for us to do contests. If you've not had a chance to get some of your bonus points. This, this is the first round where we've actually given points to people that participated in some of the contests. So when you log into the challenge, just go to the um, earn points and you can go down to the bottom of that page and you can see these different bonus points that are available for simply submitting a photo about uh, the particular topic that we're representing in the bonus points. We also have some motivation bursts. Now these are only available through the website, so if you're using the app to earn your points, you're missing out on these little extra bonuses. The technology only allows us to put those out through the website right now, but if you get a chance to log into Meltdown Challenge and go into your account, check out the motivation bursts on the right-hand side. They're a nice way to kind of be reflective about the decisions that you're making or maybe the struggles that you're facing, and it has a good positive impact. A couple of other reminders as we go through the challenge quickly is that Sundays are the end of the week, and any weekly points need to be accumulated or earned by Sunday. Otherwise, they're gone. So if you miss out on some opportunities to earn those weekly points, you may miss out on some opportunities to win the challenge. We also have the ability to invite people all the way up until the 22nd of January, which is the 14th day of the challenge. Any of your friends and family members that want to join the challenge and participate with us can still jump in, and their points are prorated based upon the day that they join so that they can still win. They can choose their own goal, whether they choose to maintain their weight or whether they want to lose more than 6% of their body weight, and they can still earn that goal inside of the remaining four and a half weeks of the challenge. So invite your friends, invite them to get healthier, even if they don't join, at least they're put on notice that you're getting healthier. And if they do join, it just goes to the total bank of providing more healthy fuel uh, or feedings for uh, Feed My Starving Children. This is the charity organization that Meltdown Challenge supports and that we also support through our Meltdown Challenge participation. Every time we end up having a new challenger join in, we get two new meals sent over to somebody that's struggling to try to get nourishment inside their body. So a great opportunity to give back just by simply inviting other people. All you have to do to invite other people is just go to the invite link right on the home page. It's very obvious when you get to that page, it says invite in the middle of the page. If you're using the app, you can see invite as well uh, listed inside the activities that you can do. 
There's a simple copy and paste link that you can paste to social media or an email, or you can just go down and share to Facebook just by clicking on the big blue button at the bottom of the screen. You can also send personalized email messages if you want to do that as well over on the right. And you can contact your coach if you have any questions on how to get somebody on your team. But anybody that clicks your link will automatically be added to your team. So let's move on and jump right into the presentation about what we're going to be talking about today, which is healthy eating made simple. The question that we have for you tonight is, do you know what you need to do? Most people would say, yes, I just need to do it. Donnie, tell us why that may not be true. Just based on your professional experience of running a weight management clinic for kids, what is it about it about not knowing what to do or knowing what to do and then doing it? Well, I, in my experience, most people know what they should do. They know they should eat more vegetables. They know they should eat fruits. They know they should skip the desserts. They know they should be more active, but it never gets onto the calendar. It never gets onto the plate. And there's different things that happen that keep stand in the way, like work, <laughs> you know, driving kid from here to there to here to there. You know, all of a sudden you need something quick and easy. And the quick and easy oftentimes is not chopping up the peppers or the tomatoes or whatever, you know. And so life gets in the way of doing what we know we should be doing. It's a matter of intentionally doing what we know. Well, and then there's times where we think we know something, but in reality, we really don't know. And it's the awakening that comes from that that becomes a great learning experience for us. And so I'd like to have everybody just get your uh, chat message ready because I'm going to show you some true and false questions. And I'd like for you to answer true or false. It's just a way to figure out whether you know the answer to these simple um, nutrition-based questions. Okay, everybody ready? True or false? Just put a T or F in the answer inside the chat feature. <clears throat> the first one, first question is, or the first statement is, the fastest way to lose weight is to eat three small meals per day. True or false? Put a T or an F in the chat feature. The answer to that question or that statement is false. We'll share a little bit more on this, but people who eat smaller meals and snacks five to six times a day actually lose more weight when the calories are exactly the same as eating three small meals per day. The next statement is, to lose one pound of fat per week, you must burn 2,500 calories more than you consume. True or false? False. The answer is 3,500 3, calories is the approximate number of calories to burn to burn off for one pound of fat. So here's another question that relates back to that. To burn 3,500 calories, the average person would have to run a full marathon, 26.2 miles. True or false? So Donnie, just to put that in perspective, if a person wants to lose 10 pounds as a part of this, uh, a part of this challenge, they'd have to run 10 marathons. Would that be true? When was the last time you ran a marathon, David? Now, I'm just talking for myself. I've never done one, you know? I think yeah, Craig's, I've tried to do one. <laughs> Craig's done it. But, you know, I've never done one. And I got to tell you, I, the half I did really took it out of me. <laughs> so to run 10, oh, my goodness. So I've the reality of it is, is that our bodies, on average, uh, would burn 3,500 calories if we were to run a marathon uh, at an average pace. So pretty scary number for people that want to burn off 10 pounds of fat. Now we're going to give you some good news here in just a moment, but we're just doing some awakening here. Here's another one. If you eat 100 calories a day, more than your body burns every day for one year, you'll gain two to three pounds. True or false? Answer is false. 100 calories a day times 365 days is 36,500 calories or 10 pounds of excess fat. So small little choices compounded over time can lead you to a place that maybe you're at today. But the other, the good news is, is that you can change that all around on the positive once you become aware and you have a good plan to achieve it. The next question is the most important thing you can do to lower your risk of disease is to maintain a healthy weight. True or false? The answer is true. Healthy weight significantly decreases the risk of diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. Heart disease being the number one killer, cancer being the second leading killer in America. 
Approximately 50% of Americans are overweight or obese. True or false? Answer is false. Recent statistics state that 70% of Americans are at least 30 pounds overweight. These are some sobering statistics, but what we want to do is we want to show you that maybe what you have known up to this point has not been the most accurate truth. It may have been partially true, but some of this new information could help you awaken yourself to the fact of what it needs, what needs to happen in the next five weeks to help you to achieve your goal on the challenge, become a winner, and continue your journey beyond the challenge. Now, Craig, these uh, different calorie-based uh, snacks are oftentimes seen as a good, a good swap, right? As 100, 100 calories of Pop-Tarts is just the equivalent to 100 calories of grape. Uh, grapes and 11 Sour Patch Kids, you know, is a, is a good treat because uh, it's about the same number of calories as two cucumbers. How would you coach that person that has that mentality? Yeah, I would say it, um, a calorie is a calorie. Sure, it's a measurement of energy, but the, the different um, kinds or ways calories are consumed in our bodies, how they show up, can affect our blood sugar in very different ways. And really when it comes down to it, um, um, foods that have um, sugar in them, like all of these, there's no meat here, all of these different things that you have up are um, a grain or something where it has high carbohydrate. And so um, the way the carbohydrate gets in your body, the speed at which it's released is the, the, um, the thing that affects blood sugar. And what we're finding, all the research is saying that if you can control your blood sugar and keep it more like a merry-go-round than a, than a roller coaster, it, it will serve you well. And so 100 calories of you know, Skittles versus 100 calories of, um, uh, I don't know, say some grapefruit, very, very different on what it does to your blood sugar. And one of them will cause your body to store those calories as fat while the other one won't. I think that we've been taught to become very good dieters. The only problem is, is that 85% of dieters regain the weight back within two years of losing it unless they have some formal behavior modification coaching or counseling. So one of the things that we provide in our health coaching program is the ability to do a little bit of rewiring upstairs. It's not about necessarily changing what you're eating as much as it is is changing what's consuming you or what it is that you're consuming in terms of facts and figures and knowledge around what it means to live a healthier lifestyle. If you've been taught to be a point counter and you could, you know, use all your points on Nutter Butters and Oreos, you may have thought that that was really cool because it works every time that you want to lose weight. The problem is, is that if it's not working to keep the weight off, is it really working at all? So we want to help people to have, and then go ahead, Donnie. I was just going to say that you just hit the nail on the head. You know, I did exactly that. I lost weight eating cookies and cream bars once upon a time. And because I lost the weight, that was like a positive reinforcement thinking I was doing the right thing. I knew I wasn't doing the right thing, but you know, it's crazy what our, what our brain does to us, but you're so spot on, you know, if you see the results, but you don't realize what's going on on the inside. Yeah, and we want to make sure that people are working on the inside out because we know that long-term health and developing a healthier lifestyle and living an optimal life is really an inside job. And Dr. Wayne Scott Anderson is one of the innovative leaders in, in medicine and lifestyle medicine and teaching individuals how to create health in their life using a very simple strategy. And we're going to talk about that tonight as we continue our presentation. One of the matters that he talks about in simple uh, or healthy eating made simple is the idea of eating breakfast within 30 minutes of waking up. Now that's sometimes hard for people to do, but the reality of it is, is that it's pretty simple to do. If you eat within 30 minutes of waking up, you're going to start your metabolism earlier. You're going to end up burning more calories through the day. You're also going to feel more satisfied and you're going to have less of that hunger feeling in the mid morning when maybe you aren't as prepared to make a healthy choice. Dr. Anderson also teaches us about eating every two to three hours to stabilize our blood sugars and to make sure that we're eating a small protein carb balanced meal or snack all throughout the day. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that's important to us in stabilizing blood sugars and satisfying our ultimate hunger needs while we're taking in those small fuelings. Now, you may be like me and say, how do you take the time to eat or prepare or to plan out five to six meals a day? We're going to talk a little bit more about that. 
We're also gonna talk about water. Donnie, you're in the big water, uh, water drinking mode right now. I know you're trying to get in a gallon a day. Talk a little bit more about the importance of drinking half of your body weight in fluid ounces every day. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I've done, I did one gallon yesterday and I could tell the difference in my skin already today. You know, there's so many different benefits to drinking water. A lot of times people struggle when they're trying to lose weight because they're hungry all the time. And that signal in our brain that um, is telling us you're thirst, you're hungry actually might be saying you're thirsty and we misinterpret it. Actually, 30% of the time it's that way. And so there's so many different things that you can use water for and that there are benefits for. Yeah, love that water and love the people around you because they're 60% water, right? We need to make sure that we're always consuming as much non-caloric beverage and water as much as possible. Craig, talk to us a little bit about this study that was produced by Dr. David Jenkins up there in the University of Toronto. Yeah, I love this. The story is so uh, revealing. They, they took two groups of people and they had the exact same foods which means they had the exact same calories. Everything was the same. All they did was they just split it up and they said, this group here, we want you to eat three times a day. This, this group over here, we want you to, to break it up six times a day. And the results um, were, were extraordinary. Same exact food, but the people that ate three times a day, they had a big dip in their blood sugar. Blood sugars constantly got low, 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 low. And then they went high because they had that big meal. Whereas the people that ate six small meals, it was like every three hours, they, they put some um, energy into their blood, some sugar in their blood. So their blood sugar stayed more on that roller coaster style rather than that, or I mean the uh, merry-go-round rather than the roller coaster. And you can see the results. They lost more weight. They were less hungry. They reduced their cholesterol. <laughs> take that, right? Reduce them to, these are the same exact foods. So what if we actually took that study and then we actually changed the foods like Dr. A talks us and we actually had low glycemic index and we ate six times a day. Now we're talking a really winning combination. We're going to share some low glycemic snack and meal options here in just a moment, but um, I want to take a quick break and I would like to ask all of the people who have followed the habits of healthy eating system that we use inside of our health coaching program, if you're watching this webinar live, would you throw in the chat feature, uh, if you're comfortable saying how many pounds that you've lost so far as a part of that type of meal plan, eating five to six times a day, small, low glycemic snacks or meals. I'd love to just see what the responses are. And for those people who are attending who are really concerned about whether or not they can lose weight, I'd like to encourage them with some of your responses so that they know that it's possible for them. It's not just Dave, Donnie, and Craig who did it, but there's a bunch of people that are doing that. Go ahead and cast your response in the chat feature if you're open to it, and let everybody else know the progress that you've made so far. Johnny, I know that uh, you've seen a lot of clients and healthcare professionals who have utilized this scientifically proven method. Um, talk about some of the barriers that people have to overcome to really adopt this healthy fueling strategy with so many different meals throughout the day. You're muted. Are you still there? Sorry. Um, time. Time is the big number one thing that I hear from people is people just don't have time to plan and prepare one meal a day, much less five or six. And so that's one of the nice things about our program is that we, we make it simple because the reality is that it doesn't matter how ideal a thought or a plan is. If it doesn't fit into our lives, we're not going to do it. Yeah. And w when we are making those pairings, you know, it takes a little bit of thought, a little bit of planning, a little bit of preparation, a little bit of portion sizing, but it can be done. If you have a good reason of why it is that you want to get healthier, we can help you using some examples like this. This is a good protein carb pairing. If you have a boiled egg and some fruit, Greek yogurt and some vegetables, and just you can see down the line, the comparison of pairing healthy protein, healthy carbohydrate in a healthy meal or snack can give you that healthy grab and go type of meal plan. This doesn't take a lot of planning, but it does take some time and time is money, right? You got to, you got to plan out that time and, uh, and get better at it over time. And that's one of the things that our program teaches individuals is that it actually teaches them to start making some of these preparations. Dr. Anderson also talks about the nine inch plate theory. This is healthy eating made simple. One of the things that we teach our clients in our program is to learn how to balance their plate. 
not a 12 inch plate where it's like a bowl plate with the lip on it so that the gravy don't sneak out. It's actually a plate that has about the size of a person's hand where the palm is the protein, the thumb is the healthy fat, the distance between the index finger and the thumb is a healthy starch, and you've got the opportunity for fruits and vegetables here in the finger, in the finger zone. Now, if you're trying to lose weight, there is a, a strategy that we use to decrease some of the carbohydrates and calories by decreasing some of the excess carbohydrates. But this is a healthy strategy that individuals can use, not the food pyramid or nine servings of grain per day. And what does that mean? This simple model can make healthy eating very simple. We've also got a list of 100 calorie fueling snacks that are right from Dr. Anderson's book. And if you go into the challenge, you can download this list of a, a good handful variety of options that you can use as a grab and go model that are 100 calories. Again, a little bit of planning, a little bit of preparation and portion sizing, but definitely worth it when you start seeing some of the results. Now we also have some portion control meal replacements or what we, can what we in our industry refer to as fuelings. These are portion control meals that have been uh, medically designed to have the right amount of nutrients, the right amount of uh, nutrition, so the protein, the carbohydrates, the fiber, and all the 25 essential vitamins and minerals are packed into a grab-and-go snack. And this is the kind of strategy that sometimes Americans are just looking for a, a program that can meet them at the speed of life. Uh, these products are items that taste good and they're fulfilling. They're also in a position where they have lots of different flavors and textures and styles to them. Some hot, some cold, some crunchy, some salty. Um, individuals can find the ones that they want or ones that they can enjoy. And uh, it may be a little bit intimidating at first to think about using a prepackaged healthy food option. But many people are doing that, including professional athletes. Craig's a professional athlete. Craig, talk a little bit more about how you used um, grab-and-go healthy fuelings like portion control meal replacements to fuel your body when you're in training. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you want to get the right, you want to get the right nutrients if it's fuel, if it's performance fuel. You want to get in the right thing at the right time and the and the right, um, and you want it to taste good. And so, um, even when I'm, so days when I'm, when I'm training, you know, I'll have usually, a, um, a fueling right beforehand, which gives me exactly what I need for my body to perform for the exercise that I'm going to go do. But, but you know, there, I spend a whole lot more time not training than I do training. And for me, um, I've been able to keep my 50 pound weight loss off for six and a half years now. And it's because I made it practical. You know, I do lots of different things, but one of the things that I do is I want, I want to be able to make it, I get worn out when I try to, try to make it hard, make it all these, these idealistic kind of ideas. So I, I, uh, I eat lots of different things and some of them are super nutritious and really convenient. And uh, that's what's been my secret weapon really. Yeah. And moms, uh, Donnie, you've got two small children at home and it's uh, sometimes, you know, uh, a great idea to do all the planning and preparing. And sometimes life just requires you to have a simpler plan. Talk about how you used uh, portion control meal replacements or healthy fuelings as a part of your overall strategy. Well, it's crazy because at first I thought I was cheating by eating, you know, meal replacements and that I had to do it the hard way to be a real woman and to be a real mom. And by being a real mom, I gained 50 pounds in nine months, you know? And so I decided I needed to be a mom. Yeah. <laughs> you just said that with so much sarcasm. That's funny. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it was, I mean, I decided to become a smart mom. And the reality was that the way I gained those 50 pounds was because I, I was not planning and preparing. I was not grabbing the list that you, you put out. What I was grabbing was garbage, you know? And so it was in a package. It was garbage in a package that I was eating. And so what I decided was to eat healthy food in a package. And I realized I was not cheating. I was just working smart instead of working hard because the reality was that with two little babies at home, I didn't have the time. I didn't have the energy. I didn't have the motivation. And as I said, if it's not simple, it just didn't get done. Yeah. Well, uh, as we re recap here before we close up tonight, you know, the question that I have for all of us that are watching this video as a recording or the live version is, um, do you know what your strategy is? Do you have a good game plan strategy to win the challenge and beyond? 
Uh, do you want to lose weight? How much do you want to lose? How fast do you want to lose it? How active are you? Are you on any medications, you know, thyroid medications or diabetes or anything that would maybe um, be something to consider as a part of your overall nutrition plan? And if you want to lose weight, you need to create a deficit. You need to create a deficit between the number of calories your body's burning and the number of calories you're consuming. A 500 calorie deficit per day would give you about one pound of weight loss per week. That would be your realistic expectation. Now you could drop some water weight because 60% of your body weight is water and when you decrease your carbohydrate intake and your high uh, sugary drinks and things of that nature, your body's gonna let go of some excess water weight. And that could give you a short-term victory in the challenge, but if you want a long-term victory, you don't wanna just lose weight for a season, you wanna learn how to keep it off and get it off forever, and we'd encourage you to take a look at the health coaching program as an additional accelerator to your experience with Inside the Challenge. We have a five-in-one meal plan that is our optimal weight program that helps people to create predictable transformation. The average weight loss for clients on the optimal weight five-in-one plan is 20 pounds. So if you have some weight to lose, whether it's 20, 50, or 100 or more, this is a great plan to consider, and it's a very predictable strategy that can give you great success. Many of us have used it as a jumpstart to a healthier lifestyle, and because it's not just a weight loss program, it's actually a full, comprehensive lifestyle program. The Take Shape for Life program, soon to be named Optavia, is a whole community of resources. The health challenge is just one of them. You also get a personal health coach, the Habits of Health Lifestyle Program, and a whole wide variety of different fuelings that you can use as a part of your meal plan. And the coolest part about it is, is that it's no more than what you're already spending on groceries. So if you're thinking about, you know, how am I going to win this thing? How am I going to lose the weight? How am I going to simplify my game plan so that I can actually get the results that I'm looking for without having to take, an, take an up a part-time job in nutrition management or in over-exercising? Some of us have done the exercise game, and it's getting harder to win. So if you're in that situation where you need some more answers to this whole program, we'd encourage you to reach back to the team leader in your challenge team or reach back to the person that invited you if they're a friend or a family member. Ask them a little bit more about this program. They may be a participant or they may know the coach that actually does the coaching on it. And we'd love to just tell you a little bit more about it. It may or may not be a fit. Any final words as we wrap up here today, Craig, in terms of encouragement and helping individuals to maintain the right frame of mind as we finish out these next few weeks of the challenge? Yeah, you know, I had a lot of people that are just thinking about um, the expense of being healthy and feeling great and, and um, what you're really doing. If you think about the investment that you make in healthy food, healthy community, the health games, um, learning something new, making that investment in that. And the return on that investment is the, the place you live, the place you go to sleep in, the place you wake up in. I mean, your body, that's where you live. Having that thrive and war and just function. Imagine having more yes days than no days. You wake up in the morning and the day says, do you got what it takes? And you say, yep. Because you've taken the time to do it. Think about that. More yes days, less no days. Um, lots of snow days, maybe. <laughs> so think about that. You know, and, and in our community, what we're doing is we're trying to have more yes days in the future than we did in the past. And so think about the investment that you're making and what you're investing. You're not investing in, in a simple book or food. You're investing in your life and the quality of it. So I just want to encourage you to, to, to lean into it to get after it. It's worth it. Yeah. And as a way to just uh, get some more um, expertise on what your body needs to um, consume in terms of number of calories to lose the weight that you want, uh, your coach, your team leader has a simple TEE calculator that they can give you access to where you can actually figure out <clears throat> based on, on your activity level, your height and your weight and your age, um, what the approximate number of calories your body's burning, and then they can give you some options as to what you could do, whether you choose to do all of your own food and use our Habits of Healthy Lifestyle program as a guide, 
or whether you choose to do our full program and utilize our healthy fuelings and our meal plans and our lifestyle program and all the community of resources that we provide. So if you'd like to get more information, contact the coach that is inside your team or the person that invited you, and they'll get you some more details as it relates to this program. We'd also like to encourage you to talk to that coach to do a complimentary coaching call just to figure out a little bit more about where you can go with your health over these next few weeks of being in the challenge. And our coaches are not salespeople. Our coaches are helping you to awaken your, your current desire to get healthier and then to connect you to resources that could assist you in moving forward in a very predictable manner. So make sure that you uh, take action on that here before too long goes in the challenge because we want to see you be a winner in the challenge. And as a, just as a no, we've had some people that have asked questions about when the next challenge is going to be. Save the date for April 17th. You can use your tax refund to uh, join into the challenge. This will be our spring challenge. So we look forward to having each and every one of you finish strong in the challenge. And we'll see you back here in a couple weeks for our week four huddle up. Thanks, Donnie. Thanks, Craig.